About two years ago, my parents suggested me to go to a math academy because one, my math grade wasn't that great at school, and two, all my friends were going to math academies. So I decided to try it myself. For the first few months, it helped me a lot. I felt like slowly I was becoming a mathematician. By training my ability to solve problems, I was able to improve my grade from a C to an A minus. I was very proud, and so was my mom. But at one point, I noticed something. The more classes I took at my private tutoring center, I couldn't distinguish if I was learning math or if I was learning to solve math problems. After many months, I could find myself solving the same types of problems over and over. Y equals PX plus C. Y equals PX plus C. Y equals PX plus C. Eventually, the number of questions that I've solved determined my level of happiness. I felt sad when I could only solve one or two problems a lesson, while I felt happy when my worksheet was filled with my correct answers. Math was a systematic subject for me. Then I came here at SSI a year ago and was fortunate to be in a wonderful geometry class taught by a teacher called Mr. Cole. For the first half of the lesson, we spent time learning about y equals p plus c, learning new concepts, formulas, and solving problems so we could be ready for our tests. For the other half of the lesson, however, we were asked to solve really hard and challenging geometry problems that were not your typical type of problems. I'm talking about 1900s geometry problems that include proving and lines and angles and just pure math. Unlike in Turing centers, where we train to solve the same types of problems, these questions were constructional. They required hours and hours of devotion of thinking. Every question was like many lessons. They all had a different point of existence. Each taught us something unique. These problems made us to think deeply and critical about ourselves to try and solve that one problem. In average, we only solved one problem a lesson, and sometimes none. Before I began a problem, I was never sure that I couldn't solve that problem. Actually, once I was so happy that I could solve this one problem, which once felt like an impossible challenge. Though it took me hours and hours to solve it, the feeling that I got from just solving that one question was inexplicably good. The me that once crazy over solving as many questions as possible was gone. Many of you sitting here today will think that my time spent with Mr. Cowell was a waste of time. Is spending hours and hours on solving just one question worth it? For me, I really liked it. I really like having the time to explore the subject on my own, rather than the teacher simply giving us the answers. That one problem that I solved in Mr. Crowell's class still sticks with me today, yet I cannot recall a single problem out of the hundreds that I solved in the math academy. The power of slow-paced learning is underestimated in today's society, while the, while the fast-paced learning and private tutoring is highly valued. But I believe that this is because people haven't seen or trust the benefits of slow-paced learning. I have this group of friends that I know, and I know what you're thinking. It's not just Koreans. I know Vietnamese and Singaporeans also. You know, their parents force them to learn math in either a math academy or with private tutors. You know, these students are not bad at math. In fact, they're among the top of their classes. They go to private tutoring, tutoring to quickly prepare for the math class that they're about to enroll in in hope that this will help them easily attain an A plus in the class in the future. In fact, I'm taking an Algebra 2 class right now, and sometimes I feel like I'm behind among my friends because when we learn new concepts and formulas, they already know about them when most of them is new to me. Many, many of my friends, ninth graders, are already doing 11th and 12th grade math right now, preparing for not just next year, but two years in advance. But most of the people, because they're learning things so fast, they forget about the fundamentals of basic math, and most importantly, the interest towards mathematics. Math, M-A-T-H. M for mental, A for abuse, T for two, and H for humans. Mental abuse to humans. I know this is quite funny, and these posts are all over the social media, yet do we see any posts that highlights the beauty of math? No. Fast-paced learning with cramming lots of materials doesn't really allow our interest to develop. I'm not saying that private tutoring is always bad. I acknowledge that some students need help outside, but for students who are simply going there to pre-learn materials, fast-paced learning can be detrimental in the long term. Having a lot of time to explore the subject, like what I was doing in Mr. Cole's class, can make the subject more engaging and in time, likable. Not only could I view math as a hobby, I learned to apply it to my everyday life. I realized what Mr. Cole was trying to do during that math class, which was to help us view math as a tool 
which I started applying to my every other subjects. Instead of cramming every information that I was getting, I approached each subject with a different mentality. I allowed myself to slowly explore the concepts of chemistry, business, and English to retain it for things outside of the classrooms. A long time ago, I've encountered a big, big problem. I doodled on my teacher's whiteboard using a permanent marker. To me, this was a very big problem because I didn't know how to raise it. Being a pretty good student that I was, I didn't want to create a bad impression of my teacher. So I thought, what, the, what in the world can I do? Then I remembered something. There is an old saying in Korean saying, 호랑이 굴에 들어가도 정신만 차리면 산다. Even, even if you find yourself in a tiger's cage, you'll be able to survive if you don't panic. In some way, I was in the tiger's cage. So instead of panicking, I decided to think about how I can solve this problem. So I sat down and I tried to rewind all the science lesson, lessons I've learned in the past. Mm. Air resistant? No, that won't work. Heat conduction? No, that won't work either. Oh, solutions! Maybe if I can get something that's soluble to the perma marker, shouldn't I be able to raise it? So I tried water, pen, pencil, and eventually the whiteboard markers. They dissolved, and I was able to erase it. I know this is a very stupid story, but to me, these small problems I encounter in my daily life really matter to me. They allow me to feel that everything that I learned had a purpose and a meaning. You know, some ask, why do I have to learn geography when I want to become a singer? Or why do I have to learn math? Or why go to school at all? These questions never occurred to me, because as I slowly explored every subject, I knew that every subject was helping me to become a more creative and a critical thinker. And I placed emphasis on slowly explored. In front of you is a, uh, is, is a notebook and a pen. Now, can you please guess, uh, can you please write or guess how much money the private touring industry will be making by 2018 in US dollars? Uh, have you got a number? Okay. Who thinks it's more than a million? Can you please raise your hands? OK, who thinks it's more than $100 million? OK, who thinks it's more than a billion dollars? OK, so most of us think that it's under a billion dollars. According to Forbes Technology, the private touring industry will be making $102.8 billion by 2018 in US dollars, $102.8 billion. When I was young, I viewed private tutoring as something that students can use to help them keep up their academic performance. Now, it's much, much bigger in scale, as I just implied. Many students are spending a long, long time in private tutoring classes. There's a city in Vietnam called Mitho, and students in there are so busy going to their private tutoring classes that sometimes they have to eat their meals in their classes as they don't have any time outside to eat it. I know this is just me, though, but I knew that these kind of scenes surround me also. I knew this by asking my friends to hang out with me. You know, when I was young, I hang out with my friends all the time. Weekend, weekends, weekdays, whatever. Same one for second grade, third grade, fourth grade, until when I was about seventh grade, I could see something changing. As I got older, the number of times that I could hang out with my friends decreased. Now that I'm in ninth grade, when I ask my friends to ha hang out with me, most of them will say no. Assuming that they're not hating me, I decide to ask why they cannot hang out with me. And I was shocked, because more than 70% of the responses were that they had to go to their next Turing classes. And I bet you that they're in their Turing classes now too. But do you think this type of learning can foster creativity and interest when they don't even have, they don't even have time to eat or hang out? Students are in the age of finding out what they're passionate about, but also preparing for the future. Now, the future that we'll have to face will be completely different to the, f to the future that our parents had to face when they were young. Although the good grades from indoctrination may have worked for our parents' generation, that won't be the same for our generation. And if that's the case, shouldn't our education change as well? Thank you.